Good morning. Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Master. Whether you're joining us here in person or online, we welcome you this morning. I have a few announcements to get us started, and I'd first like to welcome Pastor Ron Hartman. He is our pulpit supply for today, and I believe we'll be seeing him again sometime this month, but for every single Sunday in August, we do have a pastor to preside for us. Bear with me with these announcements here. Um, during this transition period, council, uh, the next step for us is to interview an interim pastor, um, and we're hoping that this week those interviews will take place, so um, that will be to be determined here. We are going to continue to have sign up for indoor worship service, so either call the office or sign up uh, with Sign Up Genius. Um, it just helps us with... Um, knowing how to place the chairs, and for contact tracing. Uh, something new that we're doing is we're allowing uh, our single members to sit together if you are fully vaccinated. We were hoping to bring back singing today with our recessional hymn, but unfortunately there's something called a Delta variant. I think you've heard about it. <laughs> so um, we're going to uh, remain cautious with that. Uh, let's see. On behalf of Susan Johnson and Worship and Planning, uh, her announcement is, are you passionate about worship? Do you like brainstorming and coming up with new ideas to enhance worship? If yes, we have a great opportunity for you to use your gifts. Worship and Planning is looking for a few volunteers to join their ministry. They come up and implement ideas for seasonal worship as well as weekly worship. Please contact Susan Johnson for more information, or certainly you can call the office and leave contact information. We are also looking for volunteers with musical abilities to sing or play an instrument that we could pre-record for our services. Again, please call the office if you are interested. Next Sunday is the last Sunday to collect school supplies for the Action Center. Second Wind is happening back at Clement Park, September 25th, and Santiago's Mexican restaurants are donating part of their proceeds to this cause when you eat there. So there's two locations, one in Golden and one in Lakewood. So um, if you're craving Mexican food, um, think about that. Uh, there was something else. Uh, joining us, please join us outside in the courtyard after service so that we can visit with one another and cookies and water will be provided. And one thing that I forgot is our prayer table is back um, at the Welcome Center, so if you want to write down any prayer intentions, um, we will pray for those during the prayers of the people. We are going to continue to hum and our opening song is One Bread, One Body.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world and all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ, welcome to worship this Lord's Day. Um, I want to take privilege and take a minute just to to speak a little bit about myself and also about you. Um, First, let me apologize, but I think I'm about 25 feet and the CDC says that's enough. Um, Mask, hearing aids, glasses, and a microphone, and someone who's claustrophobic make for a very challenging worship morning. So um, unless I'm close to you, the mask will be off. We recently moved here, and that's a whole nother story, but I will tell you that I retired, oh, in 2013 from serving a church in Northwest Pennsylvania, and because my wife's family had migrated to the South Carolina coast, that's where we ended up, no surprise there. Soon after I was there, I called the bishop's office and said, I want to get on the roster here, and I was amazed that the bishop got on the line and spoke with me for an hour. At the end of the hour, he said, oh, we're on, thank you. It's really great to have you in the Senate. We'll certainly put you in the roster. And oh, by the way, Holy Trinity in Georgetown needs an interim, and they may be calling you. You know, God has a sense of humor. You need to remember that, brothers and sisters, in these days. As I was riding up, I live in Highlands Ranch, and I was riding up 470 and a past Bear Lake, I think it was, and I saw a few people out in the boat, and I just thought about, I've been an interim pastor, I've been the chairman of a call committee, and I know how it feels to feel like you're in that boat alone, and you just don't know where you're going. God's in the boat with you, so just relax. God is in the boat, and you have a wonderful future doing ministry in this place. Okay. The Holy Gospel for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is found in Mark, the 6th chapter. And actually, that's wrong. It's found in John. Um, I think it's the 6th chapter. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, They themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the bread that perishes, but for the bread that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is with him and on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. They said to him, What signs will you give us then that we may believe? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For when the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We moved here in March, and until March, we lived in a little town on the South Carolina seacoast called Myrtle's Inlet, south of Myrtle Beach. It advertises itself as the seafood capital of South Carolina. And I will tell you that I ate luscious shrimp. I ate scallops that were as big as a dinner plate. We had blue crabs that we caught regularly. We caught, I caught a fair number of fish, too. I'm a fisherman. Tell you the truth, I don't really like fish. That doesn't make sense. But again, God has a sense of humor and makes us to be pretty peculiar. But as much as I loved all that seafood, I have to tell you what I really love is Chinese food. From the time my wife of 51 years took me to a Chinese restaurant for the first time when she was 16 and I was 17, I've loved Chinese food. It's just my favorite of all foods. A little place in Baltimore called the White Rice Inn, which is long gone, but it was wonderful. And it was the first time I ever had steamed white shrimp. My mom was potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Never ate rice until then. I love Chinese food. And I love Chinese culture. I collect bonsai. I don't know how many of you have been to the Denver Botanical Garden, but they have extraordinary bonsai there. And I'm growing small ones. And I'm looking for a place up in the mountains to go look for some starter plants. I should have started this 50 years ago, but again, you know, you do what you can do. I love Chinese food, and I love Chinese culture. One of their classic greetings is, have you eaten yet? When you go into a home, have you eaten yet? It's not, hello, how are you? Or even, do you need the bathroom? It's, have you eaten yet? Because they recognize how important food is to life. It's central to their holidays. It's central to their several different religions. Um, It's just central to who the Chinese people are. Have you eaten yet? Jesus encounters a bunch of people, and he could have well asked them that question. Have you eaten yet? And he followed them, and he was annoyed because they were looking for more signs. The signs in the Gospel of John are just there again and again and again. And of course, the signs are just like the sign that told me to get off here at the Alameda, pointing the way to your sanctuary. Those signs point the way to Jesus. And people miss the signs all the time. Tell you the truth, when I got up to the T, I almost made a left. And then I saw, oh, right there, it's right there in front of my nose. Jesus calls us and wants to feed us. But he doesn't just want to give us the things that we want. You know, God doesn't give us what we want. God gives us what we need. When I retired, I thought I was done. I had back problems and I was tired. I wanted to sit down. And two weeks later, I was the interim minister for 18 months at that little church in South Carolina. God has a sense of humor and God knows what we need. Those people didn't just need to eat. They were under Roman repression, and yes, they needed to eat. Yes, they were heavily taxed, and they probably didn't have much food. But they need the same thing we need. For some of you this day, it's a very poignant, probably sad day. A pastor of 23 years, I've not met Pastor Rob yet, and I'm sure I will at a conference meeting sometime, but 23 years is a long time. Some of you have broken hearts now. Those hearts will heal. God has a way of healing when you open yourself to God. Maybe one or two of you, and maybe they aren't here today, but maybe one or two of you in this congregation are saying, at last. You know, truth be told, not everybody loves a pastor. They didn't love me when I served some of them, Um, particularly because I was a Raven fan and I was working in Pittsburgh area. It was ugly. So there might be one or two of you who are saying, okay, we can start in a new direction. And that's okay. You know, pastors have visions. But Jesus' vision is eternal. And Jesus says to those people on the seashore, and he says to us, I want to feed you. 
I'm going to feed you not what you want, what you need. Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit, which brings you greetings from your brothers and sisters there where I, I'm a, a member. And the reason I'm here is be Pastor, because Pastor Gordy Sundquist, the dean conference, was asked who could um, supply for a while, and he gave him my name. I'm going to get him for that, but that's another story. No, I'm delighted. I'm thrilled to preach whenever I can to share the word with you. But at any rate, Jesus wants to feed you. And at Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit, we try to feed just like you do. And we just had Bible school this week. We use Rainbow Ranch. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Rainbow Ranch. It has a long ministry here. We use their staff, and they come in, and they run our Bible school for us. And I don't know how long that's been going on, because I've only been there since March. But we each evening feed the staff from Rainbow Ranch. And Monday evening, we had four young college kids at, at our dining room table. Before the dinner, my wife said, do you think we ought to serve hors d'oeuvres? And I said, they're college kids. They're going to hoover everything we put in front of them. So we had hors d'oeuvres, and they ate every one of them. There were no chips left in the bowl. There was no salsa left. And then we sat down to dinner, and, and I asked a blessing on the food, and we had a lasagna a tossed salad, and I was delighted to see they emptied the salad bowl too. They didn't just go for the protein and the starch. And we had garlic bread. And they chatted a little bit, but they were busy eating. They were pretty busy eating. And afterwards we had, well, we said we have a triple chocolate cake that my wife makes. I made the lasagna, by the way. Um, she made the cake and ice cream. Do you think you want any? And they looked at each other and the big grins came and they ate. Then after dinner, I said, well, I want to thank you guys for coming. We've enjoyed chatting with you. Um, you must be tired. I know it was a hot day. This was a hot week, wasn't it? And, and you're ready to get back and get cooled off. Well, they surprised me because they sat there and talked and talked and talked. And they talked about a kid from this camp or that kid because they've been working all summer. And one came up. They said, you know, the last day he, he actually said to one of the staff members, you know, I don't like anybody but you. Um, but the camp was fun. And I'm, in addition to being a retired pastor, I'm a retired counselor. And I tried to process that with him a little bit. I said, you know, you, even though there was only one of you that he liked, that was affirmation. And maybe that kid went away feeling a little better because he found a young adult that he could relate to. And the kids continued to talk about it and process what they were doing. And what I was seeing was them building relationships. They didn't know each other. They had come from different places. And they were building relationships, and they were trying to figure out how to heal and help these little kids. And brothers and sisters, that's what Jesus does when he calls you to the table. He said, no matter what burden you're carrying, no matter what sin you've done, whether it's one of omission or whether you did something, come to the table. Come with me. Be fed. Be healed. Jesus wants us to be in relationship with each other, and he wants us to be in relationship with him. One more meal. Thursday was my 74th birthday, and my daughter brought my two granddaughters, that's why we're here, um, and her wonderful husband, who I really like, and his parents, and my wife's sister was in town. So we sat around the dinner table and had a delightful meal, and then instantly the kids, can we go upstairs and play? They have their playroom already, which was to be a guest room, but it's quickly become the playroom. Um, and my wife's been going to every yard sale within 10 miles gathering up kids' toys. So they were up playing, but every once in a while you'd hear this little three-year-old voice or maybe the six-year-old voice, is it time for cake yet? Can we have cake now, Opa? Is it time for cake? I said, yes, come down, it's time for cake. And as we ate the cake, I said, you know, your mom made a really good cake, and she used my mother's Nana's recipe. And they said, yeah, we helped make it, Opa. And I said, isn't it good? I said, when I eat this cake, it makes me feel like I'm a five-year-old sitting in my mom's kitchen again. And it just makes me feel so good because I don't have anything to worry about as a five-year-old. Life was really good. And they said, yeah, Opa, life's really good. We like this cake too, now can we go play? 
Jesus feeds us what we need. And those little girls sitting around that table now have the seed planted that I love my mother and my daughter loved my mother and learned how to make the cake just to honor her. When we eat here at the table, and don't we all look forward to the time when we can actually come to the table again. When we eat, we're fed by God, and we're empowered to go out into the world just the way those little girls were empowered to go up and play another hour before we had to pry them out of the room. God feeds you this day and every day heals you and sends you into the world that you might feed other people. And for that, we can all say, thanks be to God. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the plenty that you give us each day, for sun, air, water, plants, animals, food, and shelter, we give you thanks. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For the many ways people you have created show us your delight in them, for rhythms, melodies, poetry, dance, and color. We give you thanks. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For the church that you have called together in your name, and for people of faith everywhere who live by sacred stories and cherished beliefs. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For this congregation, that the bread of life may become the basis for our work, deepening the faith of this body, and welcoming new people to your feast. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For all who are in physical danger or fear, for those who are hospitalized, facing surgery, making difficult life decisions, changing jobs, looking for work, or in any need, especially those on our prayer list. We lift up the Stubb family, their recent loss of Marion. We lift up Haley, Gabe, and Vera Schrank, leaving on a venture to find a new home. We lift up Ryan Newville, battling a kidney infection. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pause now for a time when we can offer our own prayer intentions. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had broken it and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
whenever we eat this bread, whenever we drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to the table, for all is now ready. And we'll let Karen. Does anybody have the gluten-free this morning? That's just a little bit different. Do you remember how to do that, Barney? Yeah. So the rest of us, if you will take that top and raise your hand, uh, our hosts are ready to help you to, to at least get to the, the host. And already I messed up. <laughs> the clear. And that's why we have napkins, right? I might need to get another one. No, I got it, I got it. Okay. Yeah, that's tough. Does everybody have the clear piece off? All right. The body of Christ given for you. Now the foil piece, open that carefully. The blood of Christ shed for you. Pastor Ron, the body of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. I'll take the like one or two fingers are still working on those so we'll wait just a second for the blessing The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace this day and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Live your new life in the world. Thank you.